that uh, our new goal in life is to acquire ice. We count our level of luxury by... How many bags of ice we can afford? How many bags of ice we have on board and how many glasses of icy cold drinks we can drink each day. There are definitely a lot of things that we've learned throughout our time here in the summer in Mexico. At Agua Verde, sure, the views were spectacular, the people were friendly, and the beach was large and sandy, but I must admit we were there on an ice skating expedition. At the very last moment, and at the furthermost end of the bay, we finally found some fishermen who would sell us some ice. Coco de hielo. Está oro blanco. <laughs> we left Agua Verde aiming for Bahia Candeleros. Another new discovery we've had with the Mexican heat is the importance of shade. Having traveled from a cloudier place, yes, we have finally started to realize the utter seriousness of having some cover from the sun. We jury-rigged up a shade that Robbie's parents made for the boat when at anchor. It doesn't really allow for the main sheet to slide smoothly or the boom to pass from one side to the other though. Upon arrival in front of the resort at Bahia Candeleros, we learn the fine technique of creeping up on free Wi-Fi. This involved anchoring with less than one meter of water under the keel, just close enough to send a couple of emails, but not so close as to touch at low tide. We were greeted at Puerto Escondido by a washed up sailboat, although the area is known by many to be a great hurricane hole. The mooring ball field is large and mostly empty. We took one for the night, stopped at the fuel dock for water, did laundry, and took a shower. These are all included in the mooring price. It was also at this point that we started sleeping in the cockpit, the only way to stay cool at night. On the way to the town of Loreto, we caught several fish, including our first Dorado on Rosa. <laughs> Needless to say, this beautiful fish made some beautiful fillets. We marinated it with garlic powder, pepper, curry, chili, soy sauce, olive oil, seaweed, and sesame seeds. Usually a fish that dries out easily stayed nice and moist in the solar cooker. We passed some dolphins who were busy fishing. The dolphins in the eastern coast of Baja Peninsula are more business and less play it seems. Loreto has a beautiful waterfront with a small breakwater for protecting the pangas and dinghies, but no protection from the swell for our sailboat. It was calm enough that we stayed anchored overnight anyways. I think the guy is sober. Can't keep it straight. Like many of these waterfront towns, this one features a lovely malecon with sculptures, a great big sign, and green shaded walkways. This town is famous for its long-standing church and missionary history, but after seeing so much brown desert, I really just like the greenery. And of course in Loreto, we continued on our favorite pursuit of finding ice and groceries. We also picked up a sun umbrella in town. 
I'm liking the new sun umbrella. It's perfect for situations like this. A long row to the boat under the afternoon scorching sun. It helps a little bit, no? No. The water was amazingly clear, so we set off for the nearby islands to dive into the water. The umbrella was doing a fairly good job in the light breeze. We arrived at V Cove just as the sun was setting. Going out with the spotlight onto the deck, I learned that if I pointed it towards the water, small creatures would slowly assemble. Soon the zooplankton showed up, followed by some small bait fish, and then the needlefish arrived to eat them all. Later on in the evening, Robbie even pulled in some large snapper, which he ended up throwing back. We both learned early the following day that bees are attracted to our buckets of fresh shower water. This isn't the first time we've been chased out of a spot by these little buggers. We hoped to dive and lounge at this great spot, but plans changed quickly as the boat was taken over by the swarm. Isla Carmen was pretty large and barren. We tried to find the wreck at Bahia Salinas, but we were unsuccessful. We made our way to Isla Montserrat instead. Actually, the rocks just north of Montserrat caught our eye. We anchored in the sandy patch between the two. The sandy patch was not as good holding as we first thought, with just a small amount of sandy layer over top of what seemed to be rock. Robbie tried his best to dig the anchor in. This might have actually saved the boat later on, as you'll see. There were lots of teeming fish in the reefs surrounding this area. Pompano, surgeon fish, goat fish, grouper, parrot fish, and moray eels. Even some friendly rays. Hi, I want to be stroked, this one seemed to say. And this one as well. But we were thinking of Steve Irwin as we often do when we see stingrays, so we kept our hands to ourselves. We've had a fellow sailor ask us if we've tried sangrita here in Mexico yet. The truth is that we both don't drink very much, but 16 pesos and a soak in the warm ocean water later, I tried my best to enjoy a supposedly delicious drink here in this fine anchorage. Mm -mm -mm. Never tasted it before. What will less than a dollar US get me? And I've been hanging it in the salt water for a little bit, try and make it a little bit cooler. Except today the water's been particularly warm. Yeah, the, the water here is like a hot tub here. I soon learned that the drink has a spicy and salty smack to it. But I enjoyed the wonderful sunset with this mouthful of warm, salty fruit drink on my sunburned lips anyways. It was a tropical paradise, ideal location, just several hours ago. 
a strong squall came in. It took about five minutes. Well, actually we could see some storm clouds in the distance. We could see some lightning. And we were like, oh, the wind is indicating it's just far away and going by. But it took about five minutes and all hell broke loose. Uh, we were anchored between two little reefs, two little islands with two little reefs in a nice snug spot. The holding wasn't that great and we just got the hell out of there, which was interesting to say the least. And now it's really sloppy and we're heading into a, a nicer, nicer anchorage, Candeleros. Better holding. We made it back to Candeleros and enjoyed the comfort of that safe anchorage for a while. It's a stonefish. And I must put my hand on him. <laughs> I was like, what's that? And I was like, he was like, that's squishy, that's a fish. Ooh. I know, he like raised his spine straight away. He was like, don't you dare touch me. It's scary because there's no resort nearby and all the people are stepping in the water. Step on that guy, ooh, you have a real bad day. Robbie used his night fishing skills to catch us some food, some of which we hooked and threw back. Definitely a catfish. But it was finally time to continue heading north, as our sailboat would not be sitting out the rest of the hurricane season here. We'd made friends with another vessel heading north, and shared some delectable Dorado with them. Dos, eh, tres. Woo! <laughs> We passed that usual pod of dolphins on the way to Loreto once more, and took in some of the town. But so much more of the Sea of Cortez lay ahead of us. So join us next video to find out what we found.